Hello everyone, welcome back. For today's video, we'll discuss some problems. First question is just a loss of motion problem. And we have in the problem, we have a rough inclined plane uh, and the angle of the incline is alpha. And on the plane lies a body to which a light inextensible thread is tied. The end of the thread is passed through a small hole in the plane. Uh, at the initial moment, the thread is horizontal. Okay, so basically if, if we look at the plane along the normal of the plane, this is going to be the hole and the thread is horizontal and it is attached to this disc. Okay, so that's how the diagram is at t equal to zero. And uh, then it's given that the thread is pulled out very slowly. And by the time it reaches the hole, it describes a half circle. I mean, this statement is a bit uh, incomplete. I guess what they meant to say was that the disc uh, describes a half circle. Okay, even though it's written by the time it reaches the hole, it describes a half circle. It should have been the disc describes a half circle. Okay, so now which of the following options is correct? So we have to compare the angle of incline to the angle of friction. Okay, and I guess the angle of friction is, is basically they're talking about the angle of repose. All right, so let's just say this is the uh, view of the plane along the normal of the plane. So this is going to be the hole. And initially the disc was somewhere over here. Okay, and uh, let's just say initially this distance is some r. So, so now what will happen is that this distance r will decrease because the thread is being pulled into the hole. But yeah, the distance will decrease in a very slow manner. And it's also given that by the time um, the disc reaches the hole, which means uh, by the time R becomes equal to zero, the disc uh, describes a half circle. So, so in the problem statement, it's mentioned that by the time the disc reaches the hole, it describes half a circle. So, so basically the motion would look something like this. Okay, so this is like half a circle. After some time, the disc will be somewhere over here. And as you can see, this distance has reduced. And by the time the disc reaches the hole, the thread's length will tend to zero. So that's how the given situation uh, looks like. So this is going to be the trajectory of the disc. Okay, so now we know the trajectory of the disc. It's a circle, right? So the circle center is over here. So at some general angle from the horizontal, the disc will be over here. So the instantaneous displacement will once again be along the tangent, right, to the circular path. Or you can say the also the velocity will be, the resultant velocity will be along the circular path or tangent uh, or along this tangent, which means the force of kinetic friction uh, will be in this direction, opposite to the velocity vector. We can say kinetic friction force will be opposite to the tangent. And um, so if this angle that the radius makes with the horizontal is theta, then Fk will make that angle with the vertical. Okay, so now, of course, we have mg sin alpha in this direction, in the vertical direction. And we have the tension force, which is the third force. Okay, and the tension force will be towards the hole, right? So, so the tension force will be in this direction. Okay, so now the thing is, uh, as this is a semicircle, right? As this angle is theta, this angle will be theta by 2. So the tension force makes an angle of theta by 2 with the horizontal. Okay, so now the thing is, as it is given that the distance r varies very slowly, it means that the disc is actually moving very slowly along the circular path, right? How, do, how did I say that? It's because we know that the velocity of the disc is along the tangent, right? So the component of the velocity along the string is actually the radial velocity that is decreasing this string length. And that is given to be extremely small, infinitesimally small, which means this total velocity vector is also very small. It means the disk velocity is very small at all times. Okay, or we can also say that the acceleration of the disk will tend to zero. And uh, we can just assume the disk to remain in equilibrium at all points along the circle. Okay, so the thing is, if the disk is in equilibrium, then we can say that the summation of all external forces acting on the disk will add up to zero. So now the thing is into the page, we have mg cos alpha and out of the page, we have the normal reaction. We can say normal reaction is mg cos alpha. Um, the force of kinetic friction, it will be mu times the normal reaction, which is mu mg cos alpha. So now we can draw a vector triangle between the tension fk and mg sin alpha. So mg sin alpha will be vertically downwards. Okay. And fk makes an angle of theta with the vertical, right? So it looks something like this. So this is going to be fk vector and it makes an angle theta with the vertical and tension makes an angle of theta by two with the horizontal. We'll just move this vector towards this point. This is going to be the tension force vector and uh, the tension makes an angle of theta by two with the horizontal. So which means this angle is going to be 
90 minus theta by 2. Um, so if we use angle sum property, this side length is going to be 90 minus theta by 2, right? So which means this is an isosceles triangle. This angle and this angle are equal, right? Um, or we can say that this side length and this side length are equal. Fk is just mu mg cos alpha, and this would be equal to mg sin alpha. Or we can say tan alpha equals mu. Okay, so alpha is just equal to the tan inverse of mu and tan inverse of mu is the angle of repose. So, which means the angle of the incline is equal to the angle of friction. Okay, so that's the answer. Moving on. In the next problem, we have an observer that moves with a constant speed along a certain inclined plane. A body thrown at an angle to the horizon intersects the observer's trajectory twice. Once again, we have an inclined plane. So, once again, if we draw the normal view of the inclined plane, we have an observer over here who's moving with constant speed, okay? So it can have a Vy and Vx, but its speed effectively is constant. And it's moving along a certain inclined plane. A body is thrown at an angle to the horizon uh, and it intersects the observer's trajectory twice and with a time interval of tau. So, so if we if project an object with some angle with the horizon, so it will move, of course, in a parabolic trajectory if we ignore friction. Right. So it looks something like this. Uh, and it's given that it intersects the observer's trajectory twice. OK. And with a time interval of tau. OK. So so the I mean, the observer's trajectory can be like this, like this, like this, like this, like in, in it can be the observer can have different trajectories. But so the next line is a hint to figure out uh, in which direction is the observer moving. So if you observe, it's given that the body thrown at an angle to the horizon, it intersects the observer's trajectory twice and with a time interval of tau, okay? So say the observer is walking like this. So the time it takes for the projectile to move from this point to this point, or to meet the trajectory the next time, it's, it is tau, okay? So that's what they've mentioned first. Uh, and if the observer is moving like this, the time tau is going to be from here to here. It, now, the, in the next line, it's given both times the body is in front of the observer and at the same distance from him, okay? So this is the important hint. Okay, so l l say the observer is over here and the projectile starts from over here. So the thing is the projectile is in front of the observer, right, at this instant. Okay, so now let's just say the observer walks in the horizontal direction. Okay, uh, I'm just taking a special case, first of all. And uh, let's just say his speed is u. So in this case, okay, so uh, when the projectile is about to be projected, the ball is directly in front of the observer's eyes. Okay, just like how they mentioned in this line. The body is in front of the observer at both times. Okay, so now the thing is, there is some particular distance between the observer and the projectile. Let's just say it is D. Now they're saying when the projectile once again comes in front of the observer, which means the projectile reaches this point, again the distance between the observer and the projectile is D. So this distance is always the same. In other words, what that means is the horizontal speed is the same of the projectile and the observer. Uh, because, the, uh, because the relative distance between the observer and the projectile is not changing between the first situation and the second situation. Now, now that can only happen if the horizontal component of the projectile's velocity is also u. Okay, Because if both these speeds are u, then what that means is the distance between them doesn't change. When the projectile reaches this point, once again the observer will be over here such that this distance is still d. So this case clearly, you know, satisfies what is given in the problem, if you observe. So uh, the condition that both at both times, the body is in front of the observer and at the same distance from him. So in the first instant, one, the body is in front of the observer and at a distance d. And in the second instant, also the body is in front of the observer and at the same distance d. So this case clearly satisfies what is the given condition. Okay, so now let's talk about the general case if you know the observer O is moving along some other direction with some constant speed of v, the projectile is projected with some speed u with, with respect to the horizontal. Okay, okay, so now in this case, the observer's trajectory is going to be a straight line, something like this. If we uh, move into the frame of the observer, then what would happen is the observer will appear to be at rest and the projectile will now have u and a minus v speed. So let's just say minus v uh, is going to be in some direction like this. And of course, uh, it will also have an effective gravity in this direction, which is g sine alpha. Okay, um, let's just write it as some g dash. So once again, the motion is going to be projectile only. So the effective velocity vector, we can just write it as some ux, some 
Vx and Vy. So once again, this motion is going to be uh, a projectile only. But if it is, let's just say the projectile motion is, um, is towards the right. So now in this case, if the given criteria needs to be satisfied, then this initial distance of OB, let's, uh, which was D, right? We took it to be D, that this distance should again be D after a time interval of tau, right? But clearly in this case, if you th throw the projectile to the right, when it comes in front of the observer once again, this distance is clearly greater than D. Now, even if you assume a case something like this, uh, where the distance is once again D, but in this case, the, uh, the ball is actually on the other side of the observer's eye right? The ball should be in front of the observer. So, so in the first situation, it is in front. Uh, so in the second situation, also, it should be in front of the observer's eye. This can only happen in one situation. And that is if the ball moves up vertically by some distance and comes back to the same distance, uh, such that it reaches the same point. This is the only situation in which the given constraint is satisfied. Okay. And that is exactly what happens in the first situation. So in the first situation, we said the observer moves horizontally with some speed u and the projectile velocity, if it is v, it must have the same horizontal speed u. If you observe in this situation from the frame of O, the projectile is projected vertically upwards, right? Uh, in this picture. So, so the projectile in the frame of O will go vertically up and it will come back to the same point. Okay. Or in the ground frame picture, the, uh, the observer moves horizontally with u. And the projectile projected at some angle theta will have the same horizontal speed of u. So yeah, that's the problem. Now, now the question is that after the second intersection, which means after this particular point, the projectile reaches this particular point of the trajectory, the observer measures the distance traveled by the body in successive intervals of tau. So another obvious thing that, you know, you can just look at the diagram and tell is that the time of flight of this projectile is tau, right? So the observer meets the ball first time over here and second time over here. And it's given that the time interval is tau. So tau is actually the time of flight, which is actually 2v sine theta by g. Okay, or we can write it as 2vy by g, where vy is the vertical velocity of the projectile. And here it's uh, g is actually equal to g sine alpha. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, we can just take the symbol g dash. Okay, okay. so this, let's just say it's our first relation. Okay, so now the thing is when the ball reaches this particular point, the observer is trying to measure the distance traveled by the ball in successive intervals of tau. So uh, once again, in the frame of the observer, what he will measure is the one dimensional motion of the ball, right? Why? Because the observer has a speed of u along the x direction. Projectile has a speed of u and vy after it reaches the second point. In the frame of the observer, this u we have to reverse and add to the projectile. So which means a projectile is just a one dimensional motion, which means uh, the observer will observe a one dimensional motion uh, along the y direction, you could say. Okay, so now it's just uh, motion under constant gravity with some initial speed. So if we take this as the positive y direction, the y displacement after tau seconds is going to be vy tau plus half g dash tau squared, right? And the total y displacement after two tau seconds, uh, it's going to be vy into two tau plus half g dash 2 tau squared. So this we can call d1. d1 is the distance traveled in the first tau seconds. And d2 is going to be the difference of these two, right? So y2 tau minus y tau. This is the distance traveled in the next tau seconds. So this would be vy tau plus three times half g dash tau squared. Okay, so now if we look at the first equation, we can say vy is actually g dash into tau by two, which means vy tau is actually g dash tau squared by two. So instead of vy tau, if we substitute g dash tau squared by 2, this is just g dash tau squared. And uh, this would be 2 g dash tau squared. Okay, so half plus 3 by 2 is 2. Uh, and the next one would be uh, half plus 9 minus 4, which is 5 by 2, which is, which is 6 by 2 or 3. So it's clear that it's, a, it's an arithmetic progression of 1 is to 2 is to 3. Okay, so the distances are in the ratio of uh, d, 2d, 3d, and so on. So the answer is going to be B option. Okay, so that's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching.